Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome to another Morales tutorial video. My name is Vasily, I'm your Web3 instructor, and today we are going to check the Get NFT Trace by Marketplace endpoint on the Morales API. This endpoint get trace of NFTs for a given contract and marketplace. So at the end, we are going to have something like this. Let's provide a NFT contract address. The default chain is Ethereum, but as always, you can use different EVM compatible blockchains and the default limit is 10. This limit is going to define the amount of items which are going to be shown down here. So if I click on get trades, I got a response like this. The block number on which this trade happened, the token ID, the price of that token, who was the seller, who was the buyer, and also the transaction hash we can always check on a block explorer like Etherscan. So if you want to learn how to accomplish this, keep watching because we are just getting started. Back to the API reference page, we can see that the only required parameter to test this on the page is the contract address, but we actually have a lot more of parameters. And also we have here from block. We can search the NFT trace for this contract on a specific range of blocks. We have to specify from block and to block, and we can also filter this from dates with a starting date and a finish date. The marketplace, for now the only one supported, is OpenSea. The cursor is just if you're going to have multiple pages and you want to split the response. And as I told you, the limit is going to determine the amount of items we are going to have on one request. So if I click on try it, providing this contract address, we have all this information, such as the seller address, the buyer address, the token address, the price, the price token address, the block timestamp, and a lot more information you might find useful depending on your use case. We can accomplish this using several programming languages, such as Node.js, JavaScript, Python, Shell, C Sharp, and a lot more. For today's tutorial, I'm using React.js on the frontend and Django as our Python development framework for the backend. So I'm going to keep on the Python tab and let's copy the code Morales provide us. On my Django project, I have an empty script called services.py. Let's paste the code here, and we have all the parameters. The first thing we need to provide is our Morales API key. So, if you don't have a Morales account yet, this is the part of the video for you to hit pause, go to Morales.io, create your free account, and here in your admin panel, you are going to have your free API key. I'm going to copy mine. Let's go back to the code, paste it over here. Let's change the contract address to this one. The chain is going to be Ethereum, a from block, let's put a random number here. And for the to block, I'm going to select the higher one, which at the moment of this video recording is this one. From date to date, we are going to leave it blank because we are searching now using the blocks. The marketplace is going to be OpenSea, as I told you, it's the only marketplace supported now, but we might support other marketplaces in the future. The cursor is going to be empty and the limit is going to be 10. And don't worry because we are going to change these parameters later. I just want to test if this works out properly. So let's go to my terminal. Here to run this script, first of all, be sure you have installed Morales with pip install Morales. I already have it, of course. And I can run pip services.py. And here the response is not returning me any transaction. And this is because this starting block number here is too high. Let's change it, for example, to this one. Let's try this again. And now we got the actual response. Here I have a lot of information that, of course, doesn't look great on the terminal. But now we know this endpoint works properly. And as I told you, we want to change these parameters to be more dynamic. So instead of using these burned parameters here, let's transform this into a function which is going to take some of these parameters as input. And with the magic of addition, I have that function ready, which is going to take the address, the chain and the limit as parameters. But of course, we have to provide the range of the blocks or the range of dates. So instead of trying to guess which is the latest block on the blockchain, I'm going to create a new function which is going to read the latest block on the blockchain and use it over here. So now I have a new function here called get latest block, which is using another Morales API endpoint to get the latest block based on the date. And of course, we have a video on this endpoint as well. So I'm taking the date on the Unix timestamp based on 
the current date using the time library for Python. This get latest block return us the block number we need. So I'm going to copy this function name and here let's just use it. And lastly, the only thing left for this script is to transform this API key into an environment variable. And the reason is because storing your API keys on the code represents a security risk, especially if you're going to push your code to a code repo like GitHub. So I'm going to transform this API key into an environment variable as I did for this Infura Web3 provider. So now we can store our keys on this .m file. And if you're planning to push your codes to a code repo like GitLab or GitHub, just don't forget to add this .env to your gitignore. And that's it for this script. Of course, we can take more parameters as input over here, depending on our preference. But for simplicity, we are going to have these ones for today's tutorial. As this script is ready, we can get its name and import it on our project views. So over here, I can say from dot services import and that function called get NFT traits. Here on the views, I have an empty view called get traits, which has this request parameter. This request parameter is going to take the input variables from the front end so I can get those using request. Address is going to be equal to request.get.get address, the same for the chain and the same for the limit. This limit is going to come as a string so let's transform it into an integer over here and now as we already have the input parameters or function get nft traits need we can just use it traits equals to get nft traits with the address the chain and the limit and as i always say let's not use positional arguments but specify each one of them chain equals to chain here and limit the exact same now this response we got here on the terminal is a Python dictionary. And as we want to use this on the front end, JavaScript is not capable to understand Python dictionaries. So we have to transform this into a JSON. So JSON traits equals to JSON.dom traits. And finally, just let's return that JSON traits as a HTTP response. That's it for this view. As you can see, it's really simple. So now we can take its name, go to our project URLs and create a new path over here. Just don't forget to have imported the views from your project over here. So path get traits, views dot get traits. And as we want to use relative paths on the front end, we also have to give it a name, which is going to be also get traits. And this is it for the backend. Now we have this endpoint get traits, which is going to trigger this get NFT traits, which as you know, is connecting to the Morales API endpoint. For the frontend, the first thing we need to add is a proxy on our package.json pointing to the IP address of the Django server. As we are testing this locally, this is localhost 8000. And also to connect React.js to Django, we are going to use Axios. So if you don't have Axios, don't forget to do an npm install Axios on your project. For the web page, this contract address, chain, and limit are related to this params variable over here, which also has an address, a chain, and a limit. So here I have a new function called refresh NFT traits, which is using Axios to connect to the backend. And here we can connect to that endpoint. So let's do it. Slash get traits question mark. And the auto completion is good enough to understand what I want to accomplish because it understands I need these three parameters. So let's do it. And if everything goes well here, for now, I just want to have a console.log of the response. So console.log of the response dot data. This refresh NFT traits is already connected to this get trace button over here. So let's try if this works properly. Let's open the console over here, put here a contract address for the Ethereum chain, and I want to keep the limit at 10. So let's click on get traits, and we got the actual response here on JSON format. And here, on this result, we have the actual information of all the traits. 
Remember, the amount of items here are going to be based on this limit. And same as on the API reference webpage, we got all this information such as the block timestamp, the buyer address, the marketplace, etc, etc. So the only thing left for us here is to take this response and present it down here. So on my code, instead of using this console.log, I'm going to use this set NFT trace function and I want the rest.data.result. This set NFT traits is going to update this variable called NFT traits. And down here, I have a variable called rendered price, which is going to map through that response and create a card out of each item. For this demo, I'm using the block number, the token ID, the price, the seller and the buyer addresses and the transaction hash. Let's go back to the page, close the console and let's click again on get traits and boom. We got the same response as at the beginning of the video with all this information. And this was really simple if you think about it. Because again, we just needed a simple script to connect to the Morales API endpoint and get all the information we need. And we didn't use all the parameters we might have on this function. So this was a really straightforward process in almost no time and with almost no effort. How cool is that? And that was it for today's tutorial. Don't forget all the code for this lesson is on the GitHub repo. So check out the link on the description. And as you are already here, click over here to subscribe to Morales channel, turn on the notifications, and also check out more videos. Thanks for watching till the end and see you on the next occasion.